microphone on. No shenanigans this time. We're good. Wagwan people. Hey, I ain't even gonna lie to you. <laughs> I spent hours, hours editing a video, yeah. Hours. Put it up, and within minutes, copyright. Bam. I done a whole editing masterclass on that video and that, but the footage that I did use was for some of the players, was for Kuli Bali and uh, Gnabry. And they took it down, but it is what it is. I'm not even going to let that get me down. We are here live. You get me? We are live. We're going to do this thing here live. Big up everybody that is in the cut. You get me? Make sure you do smash up that subscribe button if you're new. Smash that like button as well. Let's get the people, let's let the people know that we're live. And it helps when you smash up that like button. But we got a few things to discuss. It's an understatement, people. An understatement to say the least. Obviously, we're going to start off with, uh, I guess we're going to get this news out of the way. Now, people, hold on. Is this the one? What do you mean news layout? Why is that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Picture in picture. So how do I work this thing? Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to get up the whole. Do you know what? I can't be asked. I'm never gonna do that. That's just too much effort, fam. But um, we're gonna talk about Rafinha and Dembele. I'm gonna start off with holding my L. Not that I ever said he's definitely coming to the club. Who's man? Dembele is definitely coming. Uh -uh, I didn't say all that. But, but. I did really want him at the club. Let's be real. I wanted him at the club so badly. And the way it was looking, 40% cut on his original deal. I was like, this is a no-brainer. Surely this is affordable. But I don't know whether it was down to his will to stay at Barcelona to accept that pay cut, or we just didn't make an offer. Which one's true, we'll never know. But there's the L on Usman Dembele. And now... We have got an official L on uh, Rafinha. But he's a player where I always said, don't mind if he comes, don't mind if he doesn't. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't think he's the be-all and end-all of all right-wingers. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not too disappointed seeing him go. I think the potentially it's going to go up to like 75 million euros. And he's taking 35k a week. Now, compare that to what he was getting at Leeds. Compare that to what he was getting at Leeds, yeah. He was getting 60k a week at Leeds. 60k a week at Leeds, and he's taking a 25k drop. So this is why I can't be mad at that deal, because he was legit just about playing for Barcelona. That was always his dream. It was always his dream, and it was his family's dream as well. You get me? To play for the club. So to see Rafinha go there, I'm not disappointed I wish the player well, do I wish the club well? I can't stand Barcelona. I'm not going to lie to you. I am not going to lie to you, bruv. I cannot stand Barcelona. Um, but it is what it is. It is what it is. We move on from that. I think it's healthy that we move on from it. Holding on, clutching on to um, loose straws or whatever that saying is. It's not really the one, is it? Yeah, exactly. O-S-A-N-G. We offered 110K as well. So there you go, man. For him, it was just his ambition to play for the club and to be accepting... Bruv, that's over. We offered him over double the wages Barcelona were giving him. So, fair play to him. But listen, it's not the end of the world. It's definitely not the end of the world. There are alternatives that we are looking at. And I actually didn't include one of them in the video. So, maybe that was just a sign that I had to come and do this live. But the alternatives that we are looking at are Serge Gnabry and... Uh, Rafael Leao of AC Milan. Now, with Serge Gnabry, that one's an interesting one. I want to start off with some disclaimers, first and foremost. Yeah? Gnabry is at a huge club already. He's German. He's got one year left on his contract. You lot know where I'm going with this, innit? He's got one year left on his contract. He could be angling for a new contract at Bayern Munich. Or he could legit be looking for a challenge elsewhere. Now, my thing is, is that, look, he's, he's 26 years old, so he's not quite at his peak yet, but he's approaching it. He's definitely approaching it. Top, top quality player. And, you know, do Bayern really want to sell him? Well, they're not, giving, they're not giving him the contract that he wants. 
Um, are they going to stand firm to that? We've got to wait and see. There's still a lot of time. Remember, there's still kind of, the ball is still in Bayern Munich's court while he's got a year left on his contract. But at the same time, they have to make a decision because I'm pretty sure they don't want to be losing Serge Gnabry on the free, which puts this in an interesting position. Um, the good news is, is that this is a player Barcelona, Barcelona are not looking at. So for once, a player that we're looking at that hasn't got any ties to Barcelona or hasn't said anything previously about Barcelona. But if they do come in, that is going to be absolutely long, mate. Yeah, but we have the money, bruv. Barcelona, I don't know, bruv. Their, their, their director of football, Hush Puppy fam, he's just pulling off all kinds of magic, bruv. If you lot don't know about Hush Puppy, spelled P-U-P-P-I, I suggest you lot go on Google and do your homework and find out who Hush Puppy is. Because I'm convinced that brother is running Barcelona's directors of football and doing the transfer fees from his jail cell, blood. Yeah, if, if he's even in jail. Yeah, if you don't know about Hush Puppy, bruv, look at the director of football at Barcelona, bruv. And I guarantee you, if you tug on his skin, the mask is going to come off. And underneath that mask will be Hush Puppy. I'm telling you. But Barca, they're doing their thing, innit? Let's talk about Chelsea. But Serge Gnabry, I'm not going to lie to you. This is one that I wouldn't mind seeing come to the club. I cannot lie. Like, look. With the options that we've just lost out on, Rafinha, Usman Dembele, yes, those two hurt. But is it the end of the world? No, it's not. Completely not. Um, you already know Gnabry's credentials, bro. This is a goal-scoring winger. Yeah, he's hit double figures in terms of goals. The four seasons, or, or however seasons he's been at Bayern Munich, I think he's hit over 10 goals every season. So fair play to him, as well as, you know, being able to provide assists. Because you see what I like about Gnabry? Yeah, and it's a similar sort of profile in terms of Uz Uzman Dembele in this aspect. Not entirely as a player, but in this aspect. He's comfortable with either, uh, with either one of his feet. Um, and, that, and he's also comfortable on either wing. Um, he can create. I've seen people say that he's not a quote-unquote 1v1 winger when I've seen this guy fry defenders for joke. So I don't know about all of that. I've seen this guy beat defenders. Now... When you watch like the Bundesliga highlights and stuff, one thing that I am very, very wary of, I'm very, very wary of the spacing. Because in the Bundesliga, obviously, you're going to get more spacing behind the defence, more time than you are in the Premier League. Am I worried that Gnabry is going to suffer when he's coming up against low blocks? For me, absolutely not. Why? Intelligence. Again, this is why I think he's a complete winger. Up here, his movement is second to none. Raheem Sterling on that other side, movement second to none. Now, I'm not claiming us to be movement FC, but the, the, the added bonus to these guys is that they can put the ball in the back of the net and their records speak for itself. So as well as getting in the right position, as well as having good movement and being one-on-one -on -one in front of goal, you know, although Raheem Sterling can frustrate, but you know more times out of 10, it's going to result in a goal. Me personally, I think that in terms of the profile of winger, looking at Gnabry, I think he's perfect. Some others might not agree. Some might say, well, he's not, you know, he's he's not a, uh, he doesn't beat the man one-on-one. -on -one. Um, he's better on one side or he's better at doing one job. But I, I've seen enough of him to say he's versatile enough for me to play in that position. Now, another valid point here from Shane the Investor. Although it would be absolutely beautiful to watch us just boil some Arsenal piss. It would be absolutely hilarious if that happened. We've got to see where Gnabry's mind is with this because you do know he has like an affinity for the club. Uh, you can blatantly see it. Like he does have love for Arsenal. But we have spoken to his agent though. And if there was no chance of the player coming to the club, surely the agent's going to communicate that to Chelsea Football Club, right? That's just me putting two and two together. I'm not saying anything is definite. You've got to look at the news and you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. And sometimes you've got to paint your own picture. So it's really a game of opinions until the shirt is held up. So this is just me trying to put two and two together. You get me? But it makes too much sense. One year left on his contract. Transfer market value him at around £58.5 million. I believe... I think the rumoured price tag, Matt Law was saying on the article, the rumoured price tag was £34 million. Now, if you look at the quality we're talking about for that much money, it's a no-flipping brainer. It's a no-brainer. £35 million for Gnabry? Are you buzzing? Who's complaining at that price? 
That is the biggest W of the transfer window. 45 M's for Raheem Sterling. Yeah? 35 M's for Gnabry. That's 80 M combined for those two wingers. Would you say that they're both world-class or at least knocking on that ceiling? Let me know, people, what you actually think. For 80 million combined for them two, that is brilliant business. And if Chelsea get that over the line, you got you got to applaud him. you got to applaud it. You have to applaud it, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. I think that's going to be a fantastic deal. Again, when you look at the profile in terms of comparing to the other players in the team, is he currently better than what we have in terms of wingers? Raheem Sterling aside, because if you lot haven't seen the news already, it is apparently done. Wait for him to get to LA for the announcement is what um, they're saying on the internet. I think Fabrizio Romano came out of a tweet about that. But um, added podcast, thank you very much for the super chat, big man. If you did have a comment to put, just uh, just post it as a normal comment and I will read it. But thank you very much for the super chat. Um, but what was I saying? Um, I was just, oh, I just got sidetracked. What was I just talking about? Oh, yeah, I was just talking about um, the Raheem Sterling situation. Um, so outside of Raheem Sterling, who's really better than Gnabry? Who's got a better goal return than Gnabry on those wings? Nobody. Who's got a better assist return than Gnabry on those wings? Before Johnny comes in, yeah, he's got Mason Man, Mason Man. Yeah, he's got the minerals, mate. Yeah, big up yourself, Johnny, if you're here, fam. <laughs> you know, it's all love, Johnny. And I see you, Nippon, as well. Big up yourself. Um, big up Goonie, always wanted to support the channel and finally able to do so now with this, you have doubled the finances that Barca have, hey bruv, I'm not complaining, I am not complaining, yeah man, I'm seeing quite a few of you saying, Gnabry's a decent fit for Chelsea, 35 M's bruv, that price is to be believed you bite their hand off, I actually believe that's better than Basuma at 25 not gonna lie to you, obviously they play in separate positions and you know, different roles in that, I'm not saying Basuma's not a quality player but for what you're getting with Serge Gnabry, with his output, uh, you know, coming from Bayern Munich as well, multiple, well, he's won titles at, in Germany. Do you know what I mean? The guy's got a reputation on, on him. He's got a decent return at um, Germany as well. I believe he's got like 20 in like 34 appearances for Germany. Ridiculous returns. I think that's goals as well. Ridiculous returns. So this is what I'm talking about. Gnabry for me, I think that's going to be if. This is a massive if. Remember, massive, massive if. I'm not trying to get emotionally invested in any more transfers the same way that I did with uh, Usman Dembele. There's not, but I'm definitely keeping an eye on that. Matt Law has reported on that. He has spoken on that. So has Simon Phillips. Um, right now, I'm going to be very, very strict. I'm not going to lie to you, people. Um, I'm going to be restricting my sources to very, very few people that I am going to refer to when I do the transfer videos. And it will be restricted to either David Ornstein, Matt Law, uh, Ben Jacobs and uh, I forgot there was one more there's one more but when that name eh, Fabrizio Romano that's it those are the only four I'm going to be referencing now uh, because everybody else is a bit of a risk but that's not a disrespect to them you get me that is not a disrespect to everybody else like your ES Grimes and all that I'm not trying to be disrespectful to them I actually still respect the work that they do and I understand the nature and how volatile the transfer market is but those are the main players that usually get things right that have, are actual credible sources um, towards the clubs that we are talking about um, Todd Miller saying the agent could be using Chelsea as leverage for another move um, are we discussing, are we talking about Gnabry? If so, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest because Chelsea have been used as the pawn of the transfer window so far for players to be getting moves to where they want to go or contracts that they want to get. Um, and I would be silly to say that that is not a possibility. So big up yourself, Todd Miller, for that one. Nah, <laughs> I did see, I did see the Darwin Nunez thing, but listen. I'm not going to be too harsh on the brother, you get me? I'm not going to be too harsh on him. Liverpool are going to create a lot of chances for the guy. They're going to create a lot of chances for him. So I don't think he's going to do as bad as what people think, nor do I think he's going to hit the heights as what people think. So I'm going to be very balanced about it, but I'm, and I'm not going to be too biased. But I do think he'll be all right. I do think he'll be all right. Hey, Nathan, big up yourself. This week's been mad so far. It has been a bit of a crazy week. It's been a crazy week. Um, but... Yeah, it's, it's looking good so far. Can that be surely much better than what we have? 100%. Those are the basic litmus tests that I do. Like when I look at players that we link to, I just ask those questions because really and truly, what's the aim? What's the realistic aim? I've said it several times. Mine personally is to close the gap on Liverpool because we finished 18 points behind them in third place. We've got no right to be thinking about Manchester City when we're finishing that far behind second place. So 
that's my aim. Hopefully, we can close that gap, finish a little bit closer to Liverpool. Hopefully, not double figures. That would be great. That would be real, real progress, but that's still asking a lot. Or is it? Or is it? Todd Miller, big up yourself. Only, <laughs> only source should be troops is toenail. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Gnabry was a beast two years ago. No brainer. Under 100 M for those two would be ideal for our budget. It would be brilliant business. Um, I don't know what Gnabry is currently getting at um, Bayern Munich. Perhaps one of you lot can tell me in the chat and I'll bring that up when I see it. But I don't think he's going to be asking north of like your 250Ks or 200Ks, potentially maybe on the high end 200K, maybe on the high end 200K. If it is above that, I'll be surprised. But you get me, Chelsea's accounts are none of my business. If that's what they want to pay the player whose quality pay the man that money, you get me? That's, that's what I'm saying. Exeter 1985, thank you very much for the super chat. Goonie, my friend, according to Barcelona fan, you talk to Matisse, Barcelona is 1.3 billion in debt. Where are they getting all the money to sign all these players? Can you say investigation? I'm not going to say investigation. I'm going to say hush puppy with an I. Do your homework on Google and find out who hush puppy is. Because right now, like I said, he's either president or director of football over at Barcelona. He is running a mad thing over there. I am not going to lie to you, fam. But nah, that's all bans. I'm not going to lie. That's all bans. That's all bans. We know how Barcelona are getting this money. It has been explained in... Uh, in an article, we know that they're activating these um, economic leverages, which is basically selling their backside to Spotify and whatever company is willing to buy um, the percentage that they're selling. And they will be taking royalties from them for the next 25 years. That's a long time. Quarter of a century we're talking, you know. So Barca are really, really in the mud. Where are they going to get this money from? Well, they're Barcelona. They're Barcelona. Um, the players that they're signing, you know, they're going to sell shirts. I know that's only going to be a small part of it, but they better be winning stuff in La Liga and outside of La Liga to make sure that they're financially comfortable. You know what I'm saying? So it is It is what it is. We've got to see what happens. Um, we've got to see what happens. We've got to see what happens. Um, I'm getting told off for bringing up, um, for bringing up Hush Puppy. I apologize if I have um, offended people. He was not a good dude, Hush Puppy. He wasn't a good dude. I have to say that. I'm only having a laugh. But if I did offend anybody out there by bringing up this brother's name, apologies. You get me? That's one now I will say, like, you get me? I will apologize for because they were actually victims of his crimes. But I don't mean it in a, uh, do you know what I mean? I'm not trying to rile anybody up in that way. But um, big up yourselves. I am gassed about Cooley Bally. Yeah. Oi, so am I. So am I. But... This one, again, I'm going to give you a lot of disclaimer. I'm going to give you a lot of massive, massive disclaimer when it comes to Cooley Bally. It is rumoured that Cooley Bally was also looking to join Barcelona um, quite early in the season. He was very optimistic and excited about joining that club. And I have seen a tweet saying now Barcelona ideally would like Cooley Bally to wait until they get the money together to sign the player. So, look. I know reliable sources such as your David Ornsteins and then Mandea have reported. In fact, let me read it because I've got all the information here from the video that I got copyright strike on. So you guys, unfortunately, are not able to see it. Yes, the lights are flipping, killing me. Got the AC on, the fan on. But New York City is hot today. I'm sweating like I'm... But I guess wearing a black T-shirt and a black hat is not the best idea. But um, let's see what he was saying. What was my man, Mr. David Ornstein, saying about the whole uh, situation with Khalidu Koulibaly? I had the tweet here, bruv. Yes, here we go. So David Ornstein did tweet. He said, Chelsea close to agreements on fee and personal terms to sign Khalidu Koulibaly. Not done. And Napoli often tricky, but talks moving around 40 million euro deal and long-term contract for the 31-year-old. The likes of Kimpembe, Kunde, Ake remain in the mix. So that's a tweet from David Ornstein. Apparently, we are we have agreed personal terms with the player. It's just really about um, agreeing a fee with Napoli, who are notoriously difficult to deal with. I'm not going to lie. Naples are notoriously difficult to deal with because ADL, you might listen, you see this 40 million euros that he's talking about might be agreed in principle, but don't be surprised if we turn up at that table ready to pay that 40 M's and ADL says, ah, I kind of want the 60 instead, you know. That's the guy that we're dealing with. And this wouldn't be Koulibaly's first rodeo either going through that. 
We've had interest in him before. We've had interest in him for years, actually. Um, since he was he's 31. Now I remember he was like 26 when I first remember him being linked with us. Um, so we've had interest there for years. Um, then Baba, I'm not sure if he's his agent, but I had said um had talked up Chelsea to him, told him to pick our club. So I don't know if that has gone a long way to convince him. Um, but the signs that I'm seeing from reliable um journalists is that he is actually open to a move to Chelsea. He is actually very much open to a move to Chelsea. Barcelona haven't made a bid. And apparently things look like they're accelerating. But again, that cursed team known as Barcelona, while they are still lurking, I'm not going to get my hopes up on this transfer. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's true, Keanu. Big up yourself. Jorginho and Koulibaly were teammates at Napoli. Um, also, Mendy and Koulibaly teammates at the national team obviously both senegalese both of them together winning the afcon so we've already got the quote unquote chemistry between the two and obviously in an important position as well the defensive positioning um mendy can be right behind him to help his man if there's communication problems perfect <laughs> two cool ones ake kulibali and kimpembe obviously no plan for levi cole at chelsea next season mm. But is it, though? Is it a case of Koulibaly, Kimpembe and Ake? Or is it Koulibaly for sure and Kimpembe or Ake? Because that's a lot of money to spend. Because, look, if rumours are to be believed, Manchester City won 50 M's for Nathan Ake. And I think that's crazy to spend that kind of pee on him. I'm not going to lie to you. 50 M's on Nathan Ake is a mad thing for me. Yeah? Prenso Kimpembe, yeah? I'm not going to lie to you, bruv. He would not be my first choice either, blood. I can't lie. He would not be my first choice. I'm not his biggest fan. I don't think he's a terrible player. I don't think he's a bad player. In fact, I think there are aspects to his game that are very, very good. In terms of his ball playing, I think he's excellent. I think he's got a very good left foot on him. Um, do I think he's better than Ake? I'm going to have to give him that respect and say I think he is. Um, but boy, it just doesn't excite me, you know? Doesn't excite me. Koulibaly definitely does. He's slotting perfectly in that left centre back role and replaces Rudiger's perfect experience and quality as well. I've seen some people say that is an upgrade on Rudiger, but I'm not going to be a hater because Rudiger's just left the club. I'm going to be fair to the man. Koulibaly has played in Syria for the majority of his career. I believe he moved from Genk uh, to, to to Napoli, but the majority of his career has played in Syria. So. The transition from Syria to the Premier League, it remains to be seen. Now, obviously, we do know over at Syria, defenders, you know, they're famous for it. It's uh, Italians, when it comes to coaching defence, they're second to none. So I'm not really going to have too many issues with his transition and experienced player as well. Does his job in the national team. So hopefully that transition to Chelsea Football Club will be good. But I don't know about these other two, man. I really don't know. I do agree. I do agree with pulling the plug on Delict. Obviously, uh, Bayern Munich have put in their interest and the players said that he wants to go to the club. That's no surprise to me. No surprise to me whatsoever. I actually think he's better suited for um, Bundesliga than the Premier League, to tell you the truth. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. I think he's better suited over there. I think he might have got found out in the Premier, you know. I do think he might have struggled in the Premier bit. So, let's see, man. Kimpembe. Mmm. Mmm. I don't know. So now they're asking for 41 M's for, for Ake. Still, that's that's kind of mad, you know. This is what I'm trying to say, blood. Them prices there, bro. Because, look, I get it. Listen, I get the logic. Ake ain't a shit player. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not trying to diss Nathan Ake. I think he's a good rotational option. Yeah, as a week-in, week-out starter, I don't know about that. Am I going to completely write him off? No, I'm not going to do that either. But he doesn't. he just doesn't excite me. It just doesn't excite me, especially at that price tag. Now, if we're talking, if we're talking like 30, 30 to 35 M's for him, then that makes sense. Because for that, he can sit on the bench from time to time and come on and, and come on when we need him rather than Malang Sar. Because I think if we're being honest now, yeah, if we're going to pick between two, yeah, if we had only two options on the bench to step in, if Koulibaly got injured on that left side, would you rather it be Malang Saar or would you rather it be Nathan Ake? I think I know what that answer is. I think I know what that answer is. As for Levi Colwell, this is what I was afraid of. 
this is definitely what I was afraid of because for me, I think he's good enough to earn his position at this club. I think he's good enough to get some minutes this season. I think he definitely deserves a chance. I don't know what Chelsea are playing at. Is he open to another loan move? I wouldn't be surprised if he is, but it's got to be one that makes sense at this point in his development. No disrespect to the championship because you've heard me sing praises on that league several times. It's gone up levels over the past decade. I've got huge, huge respect for the championship, actually. But I would like to see him loan to a Premier League club, maybe a Southampton, maybe a club like, well, maybe a Crystal Palace, either, but he's not going to get in there. That, that centre-back pairing is kind of dangerous still. Anderson and Gahey. But it would be, imagine, imagine to see Gahey and, and Colwell together over there, you know. But I think he, he does deserve a Premier League loan move, but we have to have assurances that we're keeping this player. And, you know, signing too many centre-backs might deter him from renewing or, you know, even staying at the club might ask to be sold. So I don't think we should really be stockpiling on centre-backs. Although we have lost a few, let's not forget, we have lost a few. We're about to lose two more defenders. Apparently, Marcus Alonso and SP are close to being out the door. We've already lost Christensen and Rudiger. So that's four defenders gone. Um, now, I understand the other two are full-backs slash wing-backs. Um, as Pete could do both, play central or play out wide. But um, still, we are going to need um, some more bodies there in defence. Let's see what some of you lot are saying in the chat right about now. Princeton says, Romeo Agresti is a Juventus fan. And journalists also said Koulibaly to Chelsea is very, very close. I hear that. I hear that. But I'm still, I'm still kind of going through PTSD mode, people. I'm not going to lie. FZ City, where are you getting this from? I need a source. I cannot take this as word until I see a source. Big man, I know you do come on the channel quite a bit and you like to have a laugh with me. So I don't know how true this is. If this is true, I do apologise. But until I see sources, you get me. Man says Saar and Cole will, will fit for backup. Hear what I'm saying, big man. My Lang Saar needs to get dash out. He needs to get out of here, fam. No disrespect to the brother. I don't care if we get 10 million for him. Get him out of the club. I don't ever want to see him at Chelsea. Might be a nice guy and all that, but I can't have him. I can't have him. I absolutely cannot have him. IK says, uh, Koulibaly isn't Latin American, so he wouldn't really fancy Barca too much. I'm Nigerian. So are you, Goonie? I'm not Nigerian. <laughs> Chelsea and... Arsenal have a big influence in West Africa. Wouldn't be surprised if Mendy is on this. Hey, I, I, I'm, I'm not actually Nigerian. My African, my African heritage is, is Tanzanian, but I do love, I do love Nigerians. I do love all Africans. You get me? And growing up in London, when I did, and it's, as it is now, it was a lot of Nigerians that I went to school with. A lot of Caribbeans I went to school with. Nigerians, Ghanaians, Jamaicans, um, Bayesians. You get me, it was it was it was a huge mix of black people from everywhere, so you get me, but it was mainly a lot of Nigerians and 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 uh Jamaicans where I was at. That's why outside the Tanzanians and the British, you get me, like I understand them two cultures a hell of a lot more than others because I was just around them. But love to Nigeria, I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, the Ghanaians might not like what I'm about to say, but Nigerian Jolof is winning all day long. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you see why I'm going to redeem myself, yeah? Ghanaians make a soup. I think it's called emotu or something like that, yeah? Peanut soup. Hey, listen, that... Hey, listen, I feel so good to be African right now. Big up all of you. Big up all of you, blood. You're not getting me hungry. You see, why did you mention your country? Now I'm thinking about jollof and peanut soup and these things there, man. Get out of here, bruv. Yeah, bruv, now I'm getting hungry, but... Let me get back to the football instead of food, blood. Let me, let's get back to it. But Koulibaly, definitely, definitely, I think will be an amazing option. Um, what do you lot think? Do you reckon that it would be a great option to be signing Koulibaly? Do you think he's a world-class talent? Do you think um, he's going to step in the way Thiago Silva did and fit in seamlessly? Because I have a feeling that he might, you know. I do have a feeling that he might. Um, Tanzania, damn. Yeah, we're next door neighbours, bruv. Big up Kenyans as well. Big up everybody in it. Yeah, Habari Yako, man. Safi too. Habari Zahuko. Hey! You see, my Swahili's on point. You don't try to put me on the test. You try to put me to the test. But I got you. Eh? You see that response, blood? Yeah? Trust me. That response was there. That peanut... Hey! Trust me. Listen, listen, listen. Hey, I told you. No more food talk. I'm seeing bare food here. And I'm getting hungry, bruv. 
and I need to get rid of the belly. Yeah, man, like expressions and, and rants are putting on pressure. Then, man, I go to gym every day, but I need to get a six pack and them shoulders back and show people Wagwan. But definitely, Kuli Bali looks like a very, very good signing. And do you know what? One more signing I do want to discuss before we go. Um, potential one, potential player that we're looking at actually. Don't know what I'm talking about signings, but um, potentially. As an alternative to Rafinha, um, which has just got the here we go from Fabrizio Romano, um, by the way. Rafael Leal. Now, this one excites me. This one excites me. This one, to me, is as good as a marquee signing. Again, I'm not getting too ahead of myself. I'm not, because this is going to be an expensive deal. Yeah? But what I will say is this, though. If Marie... Well, it's the old, yeah. It's the old, it's the old guard. But if Chelsea Football Club, yeah, I know I'm reaching a bit. If Chelsea Football Club can spend 113 million euros on Romelu, Cement Boot, Buffalo, Lukaku, yeah, you should be comfortable spending 100 million euros on Rafael Leal because this guy is a monster, fam. He is an absolute monster. Yeah, in terms of you want to talk about, like, the full package, the guy good with his feet. He's a big dude as well. Acrobatic as well. This guy's battering bicycle kicks and licking crossbars and just doing mad things, bro. Very good on both feet. He's just a source master. Yeah, so to have him would be as good as an as, an, as, as a uh, marquee signing to me. But listen, it's one of those ones where, again, I've got to see more links to it. I know Matt Law has referred to it as a potential Rafinha alternative. And he did say Gnabry as well. Whether he means Gnabry and Leal, if that was the case, I'm going to absolutely probably just lose my mind. Because Leal, true say, can place um, down the middle. And for 30, and when you think about it, 35 mil for Gnabry, that's affordable for two of them, you know. That's affordable for two of them, you know. I swear down, that is affordable for two of them. Man are saying, I've gone mad for layout. That's what they're going to be paying. Bro, listen, you think I'm going crazy? That's what they're going to ask for. That's what they're going to ask for. I'm not going to lie. That's what they're going to ask for, 100%. But listen, I don't agree with the price. Am I smoking budge? Nah, because you don't know what I'm dealing with out here, fam, yeah? The green herbal stuff only, fam. But you already know, it, the price tag is nothing to do with me and respectfully you. But if Chelsea are interested in looking at the player, we've got to accept reality. That's the money that they're going to spend on the player, fam. You know what it is? It's a lot. It's, it's a lot of bread. It's a lot of bread. Why do we need another playmaker? We don't need him to be a playmaker. Why do we need him to be a playmaker? We've got. If we're going to sign Gnabry, we're going to have him. Raheem, Raheem Sterling is going to kick him with a few assists. Hopefully, money makes as well. We don't need him to do all of that. We don't need him to do all of that. That's cool. Now, defense, we're going to sort that out. That man is saying Leal's a step over merchant. DRB is a much better player. I like that DRB kid as well. He's young. They're asking for a lot of money for him, but I think he's got a lot of talent. I'm not going to lie to you. But this is where we might be able to knock down the price. Although we do know, like, uh, Bowley's been going for the swap deals. He's going for the swap deals, although they don't really materialize. They don't really work. If AC Milan are to come in for Ziyech, and you know that we're looking for a permanent solution. This one is not going to be alone with an with an option to buy. We're looking for a permanent solution here with Hakim Ziyech. So if we could get him out the window and he's going to AC Milan, technically, you could say if he goes for about 30 to 35, maybe 40 million pounds or euros, put that against Leal. Now you're looking at around, if rumored price to believe to be believed at 100 M's, looking at around 60 M's. And at that price, I can kind of, when I look at it that way, I can get my head, I can get my head around it. I can definitely get my head around it. Mixed feelings about um layout. Some are saying he wouldn't cope in the prem, um, wouldn't cope with the intensity, thinks it's gonna be a flop signing. I uh, know, and my thing is, do you know, you know what as well? As I like I do, I'm not gonna lie, I like what I've seen of him. Again, not the most informed opinion. I will tell. I must tell you this: not the most informed, but I've seen him enough times to have a, a bit of an opinion. I do like him. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. But if man is saying he's lazy, and that, hmm, who knows? 
And I say, Leo's a black CR7. Well, I'm just going to have to wait and see. I'm going to have to wait and see. The defense, of course, I am I'm concerned about that too. We need to know what's going on with this situation on Jonathan Klaus because that one looked to me like an easy deal to get done. 10 million euros they were asking for over there at Lens, and he's a Chelsea fan and seemed to want to play for the club. But what's going on? What is going on? I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Chelsea don't seem to be moving. They don't seem to be biting on that. You know, we seem to be getting the business done on the centre-backs, but we do need some backup wing-backs, you know. We definitely need some backup wing-backs because Chilwell's going to come back. We don't know how long he's going to stay fit for. Remember, he's come back from a very, very traumatising injury. We have a lot of left-backs on the books as well. This is what concerns me. We've got Baba Rahman. We've got uh, Chilwell. We've got Ian Matson. We've got Emerson. And then to bring in another one, that's five. So I don't know if we're actually going to bring in a left wing back because we've got that issue. We've got, we've got Kennedy, who they consider as a left wing. That's five. So I don't know if we're going to actually do that. I don't know. But that right side, we need to see what happens there. Someone is saying, Werner must stay. If, if we're going to get a good price tag for Werner, I think he needs to go. I'm not going to lie. 275k a week, I don't think he needs to stay at all. Yeah, he needs to get gone. He needs to get shot away, cuz. I'm fine with Klaus. I am 100%. But it's whether it's going to happen. It's what Chelsea, what are they doing? What are they dealing with? 326 people in the building. Make sure you smash up that like button, people. Subscribe to the thing if you're new as well. You get me? I did try and put up a pre-upload earlier on. But I got hit with a copyright strike. In fact, I'm not going to lie. I tried three times, three different times. Each time I got hit with a copyright strike. Uh, the last one did go live and it got struck while it was live. So I just said, you know what? We're going to do a live instead. We're just going to have a chat on the live with the people's them. Um, we're most likely going to sign Gnabry. I think so too. Well, I don't know. I don't know. We have to wait and see. I'm not going to say I think so. I just want to wait and see what happens because... I'm scared to talk in this transfer window, man. We seem to be getting the um, the short end of the stick all the time. But listen, that doesn't mean I don't have any. I don't have any faith in Chelsea because I do. I definitely do. How much would you sell Kante for in a realistic market? And Golo Kante with one year left to go. The most the most we're gonna get for this man outside of the Premier League. We'll be lucky to get 30 m's for him in the Premier League. We'd be lucky to get 40 max for him. But I think 35 M's would be the magic number to get him gone in the Prem. For sure. I don't really, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest with you. If I, if between Jorginho and Kante, we have to see what our plans are in the midfield before I can answer that question. Yeah, but apparently, no, but apparently there's another club that are trying to finalise a deal with him, which is why I'm kind of like, I don't know what's going on. Loving the content, Goonie. I'd be excited about Leo. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. I don't, I'm not a fan of the Kimpembe links. I'm not a fan of the Kimpembe links. Can't lie. But again, this one will come more of like, you see, Ake and Kimpembe, I'm putting my trust in the manager because I saw what he done with Rudiger and them, man. And I'd be crazy to say he can't do the same with other players. AC broken up town, Goonie fam. The AC is on. It's just these LED lights here, yeah? I've got one here, another one there, and another one's... Well, that one's not on, but it is melting my face. It is melting my face, rude boy. It's horrible, fam, yeah? If you do content creation or, like, you sit in front of a camera and you've got to deal with, like, LED lights, yeah, the heat coming off this is a mad thing. So this is why, man... And usually, I'm a sweater. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm one of them ones. I'm a sweater, man. I sweat like this. I sweat like this. Kante so will hurt. Of course it will. It definitely will. Definitely will. Thoughts on, oh, don't, don't, don't get me started. Don't get me upset. Do not get me upset. I beg you, don't get me upset. <laughs> don't get me upset, fam. Your Kante will need to drop his wages to a loan deal at any Premier League club, I reckon. Well, it depends. He's been linked with Arsenal, although I wouldn't really want to see him go to Arsenal. But I think they're the only club that would be foolish enough to pay that kind of money to be paid. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna disrespect and say foolish, but if he's gonna move club, I reckon he's gonna be looking at 275k north for that. And Arsenal will pay that. And do you lot think he's worth that? Like from what you've seen in the past two seasons of him, he's been very on and off, very, very on and off. 
Need to work on an intro video. No, I am. I am. I'm doing upgrades, people. Don't worry. The upgrades are on the way. I had a lot of upgrades in this new video, actually. But the upgrades are definitely coming, man, for the new season. Manuel Dennis from Watford. Why is no one looking at him? He might be a gem. He's only been in the Prem for one season, I believe. Might he get his move this? Might get his move on this. Does, K does K2 depend... On his speed, athleticism, or is he positioning? Nah, he doesn't depend on his speed. Although he is very fast and athletic, by the way. Up here, he's got it. Like, his last ditch defended in the box. He's defended in the box in general. He's very good at it. Very, very good at it. And as well, what I've noticed about him is he doesn't really go to ground. That is a very, very last resort for him. He does like to go shoulder to shoulder. He's got very good upper body strength to knock the player off balance. Obviously, I know you've got to be careful with that in the box. But he is very good at it. Very, very good at it. Uh, you'll be surprised, mate. Apparently, Tutu has been impressed by Dujon. Oh, that's true. I completely forgot that he's there. That's true. Not a fan of Kempembe or Liao. BLM President Gooney. Yeah, man. Actively in charge. You get me? Absolute stills. No, man. But look, there's a long transfer window. You never know. You never know. We might be looking at some of these players. We might not. We might not. Will not sell Kante to a direct rival. You never know. If we get an offer, that's too good to be true. I don't know. This hay fever is killing me, people. I'm starting to get a headache as well. Flipping out. Kante's not finished. I'm saying here first, he'll be phenomenal, phenomenal this season. A part of me thinks that too. A part of me thinks that if we do sign a midfielder to take the, the workload off him and allow him to really take time and recover, I think we could see at least a better N'Golo Kante than what we've been seeing. Wagwan, well, mate, with their cuz. Thank you for joining us. But I can't get, ah, oh, mate, sorry for bringing it up, but I can't get past you saying Phil Mitchell. <laughs> oh, mate, yeah, if you like, ain't seen that episode of Back Again, go back and watch that. It was an accident. I was talking about um, directors of football. Obviously, I was talking Michael Edwards and um, Paul Mitchell. And I slipped up and I did say Phil Mitchell by mistake. And if you don't know who he is, Famous character in a series called Extenders over there in England. Uh, so I did get mixed up with his with them two names, and it won't be the last time, trust me. It definitely won't be the last time. I like the player, can't lie. I like Milinkovic Savage a lot, but will we sign him is a, it's another question. I think Naples are looking for like 70 million euros for him. It's not gonna be cheap, definitely not gonna be cheap. I think he's a quality player. Is he quite the profile that we're looking for, no, but can he play that role temporarily? I think he can. I think he can do it very, very well as well. Play that DM role. I know he has done it a few times for Lazio, but my first choice is still Declan Rice. I still think if we sign Declan Rice, there'll be a place for him in the team. But it's just what are two calls plans? If we do play midfield free, I think him, Declan Rice, and whoever you want to throw in there would be brilliant. Mr. Butler, I have to disagree to put Kante in a, center, a CDM role and go back to the back four. I don't think so, man. We saw that under Frank Lampard and we had so many holes in that midfield. We just got absolutely battered with him as center defense, um, as the defensive mid. Absolutely battered with him there. So I'm not really a fan of seeing him as the DM. Can't lie. That's what I said. He plays for Lazio, bruv. Milinkovic Savage. That's what I just said. Or who did I say he played for? I know he plays for, for, for Lazio. Who did I just say he played for? Did I make a mistake? Was I going too fast? Do I need to put the brakes on? <laughs> I know I must have slipped up, but I know for a fact he definitely... I know he plays for Lazio. I said Napoli. Blue shirts is what got me mixed up. Yeah, allow me. I've been doing player research all day, yeah? We've been dealing with Cooley Bally all day, people. Yeah? It's an accident. <laughs> it's an accident. It's an accident. It's an accident. Keep your hair on or you're going to end up like me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, but um, the young situation, I don't know, man. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what happens, bruv, because, look, the rumours on that have gone quiet. And apparently what I've been seeing, it's looking more mm -hmm. likely he is going to go to Manchester United. But the player himself doesn't actually want the move. So definitely we've got to keep an eye on that. Um, that Nunes guy from Sporting, I love the look of this guy's profile, whether we're going to go for him. Again, it's gone quiet on that. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, the lights are killing me. The lights are killing me. And I'm about to, you know, I think I'm about to take this advice and actually take a nap. 
not going to lie. Um, I have been at it all day with the editing, taking three massive L's. Uh, this is my daughter's uh, wristband, by the way. I don't even know why I got it on. It was just here on the table. But big up Amaya with the wristband. Promise you I don't go outside with this. But um, yeah, that's me done. I am getting a headache. These lights are killing me. They are melting this chocolate man. Uh, I have to just go and get some rest. But big up everybody that did join in on the short notice. It was supposed to be an upload, but I got struck for that one. But people, thank you very much for joining in, man. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, please do me a favor, subscribe if you're new, smash the like button as well so we get found in the algorithm, um, all of that good stuff. And if you're coming here after the video's done, leave your thoughts down there in the comments. I will be reading through. Big ups. Love, people. Laters.